Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today on our channel we are going to be continuing to unpack Queensland's External General Maths Paper 2 from 2020. We're going to look at question 3 which is probably the most complex question across the whole paper for General Maths. I'd like to welcome all of our new subscribers and for those of you who are returning, welcome back. It's great to see you and why not follow us now on Facebook and on Instagram. Just look for McClatchy Maths there and you'll get um, access to some fun competitions coming up soon and um, other tips, tricks, memes, etc. Okay, let's crack into that particular question now. And it was the most complex question on the paper. So let's have a quick look at it. The least squares line for a sample of five data points was found to be y equals 2.1875x plus 0.0625 with a correlation coefficient of r equals 0.875. So we've got some information there. We've got the equation of the least squared regressions line. We've got the value for Pearson's correlation coefficient. And we need to determine a set of values for P and Q, given that these values differ by three. So if we look at the data table, we can see we've got all of the values for X and most of the values for Y. We're just missing two Y values, P and Q. So let's see if we can unpack some of our understanding about a least squared regression line and what that means for this question. So one of the key things that you really need to understand is that these are the points that create the scatter plot and then the scatter plot creates the least squared regression line equation. So the equation doesn't come first and then find the data points. No, it's data points first, draw your scatter plot, then you need to actually come up with the equation. So we've sort of given the information at the back end, we need to actually find the information that was used at the very beginning. So we need to recognize that the least squared regression line comes out of this data set, not that we substitute the points into the, the equation to get the data set. And that's a key misunderstanding a lot of people had on this question. So what the purpose is of a least squared regression line is, it's a mathematical way of finding a line of best fit, but it minimizes the distance between each of those points on the scatter plot and the line of best fit. So that particular line is created mathematically using a formula, which is on your formula sheet. So understanding as well that we got that equation using some formulas is really critical understanding. So let's just quickly recap what we've just covered. Firstly, you need to understand that the equation comes from the data set, not the data set from the equation. You need to understand that the equation comes from formulas. Now, if you look on your formula sheet, you're going to find that um, we've got a coefficient of x, which is b, and we've got a, a constant, which is a, and a and b are calculated using means, standard deviations, and Pearson's correlation coefficient. So, Pearson's correlation coefficient comes before a and b arrive. So this is important things we need to understand. We also need to recognize that it's very possible that the least squared regression line, when we draw that scatter plot, is not going to pass through a single point, particularly if you've got a situation with weak or moderate correlation. It's very unlikely that that line is going to pass through any of your points on your scatter plot because it's trying to minimize the distance between each of those points. So there's a good chance it won't pass through any. Recognizing that means that you're not going to find a point on the line potentially inside that table of values. So if we substitute those values of x into that equation, we're not necessarily going to get an equal value for y. So one of the common misunderstandings for this question is, is you can see that later on the table, you've got an x coordinate of four, and you had that earlier in the table as p. Some students immediately assumed that if p was eight, Sorry, if, yeah, if y was 8 later in the table, then p would have to be 8 earlier in the table, and that's an incorrect understanding. Okay, so we can't just substitute those x values in. You won't get the y values. In fact, what you get is a predicted value, and you know this from doing residual plots. So you have your actual value. These are the actual values of what was actually measured. And then when you substitute in the actual x value and get a prediction using the equation of the line least, of least squared regression, that's when you get a residual. So a lot of students have, have assumed that these points are residuals and they've worked in the wrong direction instead of understanding this is the original data. And that's what we're trying to find is original data. So definitely not, not substituting in this case any of those x values. That would be interpolation. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to get back to the original data. So how would we do that? Well, firstly, 
Your very first step is to recognize that the equation y equals 2.1875 x plus 0 0.0625 is actually um, something that we derive algebraically using formula, using all of the points. Now we've just mentioned that previously. We use that to find A and B. So to do that, we have to calculate those using formulas from our formula sheet. And we need to recognize that our form of our line is y equals a plus bx. And if you're in South Australia, a and b get reversed. And that would hopefully be something your calculator will pick up on if you're using um, a Texas Instruments calculator. Now, using our knowledge about what a and b represent, we know a is equal to 0 0.0625 and b is equal to 2.1875. That was worth one of the six marks. And probably only about 50% of the students would have got that step done. So if in doubt, you need to be looking and unpacking the information that you're given and possibly if you're not sure where to go with it, use formulas to actually write things down because that would have earned you a mark. Okay, now you need to find A and B. You've got A and B, but you need to work backwards to find um, some of those Y values. So what we're going to do here is remember that A is equal to the mean of Y, take away B multiplied by the mean of X. Well, we've got A and we've got B and we can work out the mean of X using that information that's in that table because we've got all of our X values. So remember the formula for the mean is simply to add the numbers up and divide by how many numbers there are. So let's do that. We're going to add 4, 3, 8, 4 and 6 and divide by 5 numbers and we get that X is equal to 5. So we needed that mean of X to make some progress. That was worth our second mark. Now, still recalling our formula now, we've got A, we've got B, we've got the mean of X. All we need to do now is find the mean of Y and we're getting closer to our solution. So I'm gonna substitute that information into this equation from my formula sheet. And when I work that out a little bit further, I'm going to find that the mean of Y is equal to 11. And you may wanna just verify those calculations on your calculator. So now I've got the mean of X and I've got the mean of Y. You might be thinking, where am I going with this? Well, that finding the mean of Y was worth your third mark. So even if you'd only made that much progress, you've already halfway there on this complex familiar question. So now we know that the mean was calculated. This is something to recognize is you need to understand how you got the mean in the first place. You did it with X, so you should know how to do it with Y. We add up all the values that there are, and then we divide by how many values that there are. Well, we know there's five values, so the denominator is going to be five. And we know that our Y values are going to be P plus four plus 16 plus eight plus Q. So, and we know that the mean is equal to 11, so we can set that to be equal to 11. And we can simplify the top to 11 equals P plus 28 plus Q, and it's gonna be divided by five. So let's simplify a little bit further. Let's multiply both sides by five, and we'll get rid of that denominator, and we'll have 55 on the left-hand side. So now we know that 55 is equal to P plus 28 plus Q. Let's subtract 28 from both sides, and we're gonna find that P plus Q is 27. That was worth your fourth mark. Now you might be thinking, well, how do I know? I don't know what P is and I don't know what Q is. So how do I work out what they are? Well, we know that P and Q have a difference of three. So P plus three would be equal to Q. Alternatively, you could have done Q plus three equals P. It wouldn't really matter. You just know that the difference is three. So we've now got two simultaneous equations. I'm gonna set that up. This is our first one that we just worked out when we got our third mark, 20, sorry, our fourth mark, 27 equals P plus Q, and we call that equation one. And then the next thing we've worked out is P plus three is equal to Q, that's equation two. And we can simply substitute Q equals P plus three into our first equation. So once we substitute that in, we're gonna get 27 equals P plus P plus three, which is what Q is equal to. Simplify that a little bit further, P plus P gives us two P. Take three from both sides, we get two P equals 24, and voila, we found that P was equal to 12. And that's a very simple final step now. We're gonna substitute P equals 12 into equation two. 
which basically means we're doing 12 plus 3 and that gives us 15 for our value of Q. So now we've found the values of P and values of Q. So that's worth our fifth mark out of six. Well, we've actually got our solution. So you might be wondering, what's the sixth mark for? Well, it was awarded where working was logical and organized and all the key steps were communicated. So you can see it was quite a complex question. You could have gone in a lot of different directions with it. So it's very important that you do lay your work out in a methodical way. So that would be things like communicating all your formulas, like when you're writing down the formula for the mean, you write the formula first and then substitute in. Communication, for example, when you're solving your simultaneous equations, giving your equations a number and saying what you're substituting into where. So those are all the key points. Also finishing off with a statement as well to communicate your final answer. So let's recap where all of those marks were awarded. Stating A and B was the first one, finding the mean of X, then finding the mean of Y, stating that P and Q added together equal 27, then solving using simultaneous equations, and then that organization and communication. Some of the really key understanding in this particular video um, and being able to solve this question effectively was really understanding the whole process of working with bivariate data that we start with the data set and then we move on to the scatter plot and then we do the line of um, least squared regression using um, formulas for a and b and we bring those two values into the equation as I mentioned before, a lot of students didn't even attempt the question and they would have achieved zero. And some tried to do what I did at first and that was substituting in X equals four and X equals six. They would have also got zero marks for that because that was not awarded anything in the marking scheme. And if you try that for yourself, and substitute um, x equals four and x equals six in, they will not have a difference of three. And that was probably where a lot of students got up to and went, hang on a minute, this doesn't have a difference of three. Of three so therefore I'm on the wrong track, but I just really don't know where to go any further. So that's what I meant by saying, you really need to understand your process of how you come up with a least square regression line. You need to know what its purpose is as well. I really hope this has been a very informative video for you today. If you have any questions or any comments, contact me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com or direct message me on Facebook and Instagram. Once again, my name is Natalie McClutchy. You've been watching McClutchy Mass and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.